We are in the midst of a theme year on generosity, the year of the generous spirit. We began the year with giving and receiving with the gift of time. When we give it, the world changes. We explored the gift of wisdom and mentors, how teaching and how learning changes us. And in December, we looked at the gift of presence, not presents that we wrap and put under the tree, but the mindful attention we give to each other and our surroundings. And today, the gift of forgiveness. No one ever deserves to be the victim of crimes, neglect, abuse, violence, war, intimidation, the list goes on. But how do we heal from those transgressions? How do we heal those transgressions? Are there unforgivable acts? Have some in this room here experienced things they will never recover from? These are the questions I began to ponder as we thought about the gift of forgiveness. And I thought the God that I understand demands we try to heal, to forgive, to love from through all pain and suffering that we experience in the world. The God that I understand says we don't rest in our victimhood, that we must wrestle with what happens to us in the world as hard as Jacob wrestled with the angel in the Old Testament. And we have to wrestle with forgiveness. To be honest, I'm not sure I know all that much about forgiveness. I do know that it is coming more and more easily as I age, and I know this church has something to do with my maturity in this regard. When I ask myself, what is forgiveness? What models do we have? I look in many directions, but one I turn to is the forgiveness, the people I met doing the abolition of the death penalty work I did so many years ago, even before I came to Dallas. They brought to the table a new way of seeing the world. They called forgiveness a path rather than a destination. Sister Helen Prejean, you remember from the film Dead Man Walking I met in St. Louis. She was the leader of the band of anti-execution pilgrims I was part of. She told story after story about people moving beyond the notion of revenge to forgiveness. She said the people she met who could do this crossed a great chasm of vengeance to becoming peacemakers. They did it to preserve the love within themselves. Prejean said reconciliation must occur between families and criminals. The reconciliation means that we must have outrage over the crime, but also know that nothing will be healed if we imitate violence. What can heal a human heart when you've suffered such a loss? Prejean asked. And she answered her own question to work for justice and peace, to change the dialogue in society, to embrace what happens and what is real. She said, Soldiers who fight in Iraq can become witnesses and return to tell the stories about the humanity of the Iraqis. The same way we who know injustice, we who know violence, must tell the stories so that our neighbors and our societies have a chance to heal. The best thing we can do with our lives is to change human consciousness, to awaken compassion where there was a desire for vengeance, to awaken the innate desire in people to love everyone where there is mistrust and hate. 
Now that is a tall order indeed. And there are so many transgressions here in this room. From the child who says something mean all the way to a molestation or even violence in our families. What do we do with it makes a difference. Today we ask the spiritual questions, what is forgiveness? When and where have you been forgiven? When and where have you forgiven others? And what difference has it made? I'm hoping our guest, the LeBron James of forgiveness, will help us understand that in a few moments.